I'd always wanted to see Alaska because I'd heard it was really pretty. So when I had the chance, I rented a cabin at a popular camping spot called Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins. The campsite was really big and had lots of spaces for tents and cabins, and even some fancy camping tents. It was full of trees and plants, which made me feel like I was really in Alaska. The day I got there, it was sunny and the long shadows from the tall trees were really beautiful. The air smelled fresh and like pine trees. My cabin was in a quiet part of the campsite, with lots of trees around it. It was a simple wooden cabin with a small porch. The first few days were really peaceful. I spent my time walking in the forest and fishing in the river. At night, it was really quiet, except for the sound of an owl or the wind in the leaves. One night, just as I was falling asleep, I heard a weird noise outside. It sounded like something heavy being moved. I thought it might be an animal, but the noise was too regular. I decided to check it out. I took a flashlight and went outside. It was really cold. I shone the flashlight around, but didn't see anything strange. I walked around the cabin, and the sound of leaves crunching under my boots was really loud in the quiet. When I got to the back of the cabin, my flashlight showed something that scared me. There were footprints in the dirt. They were bigger than any human footprints I'd ever seen, and they went straight into the forest. I followed the footprints until they disappeared into the thick bushes. I stood there for a bit, feeling really scared. I felt like someone was watching me. I ran back to the cabin and locked the door. I didn't sleep at all that night. The next morning, I packed up and left. As I was driving away, I still felt really uneasy. I knew I'd come across something wild, something that reminded me how small we are compared to nature. Even though it was scary, that experience made me respect nature even more. It reminded me that we're just visitors in nature. And even though I didn't see any ghosts or mythical creatures, the fear of the unknown was even scarier. I'd always heard Colorado was beautiful. When I moved there, I wanted to see it for myself. I picked a campsite called Chalk Creek Campground in Nathrop, right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. The campsite was between two towns, Salida and Buena Vista, and had a great view of the mountains. The campsite was big, with a stream flowing through it, and places for RVs and tents. The sound of the stream was calming, and the mountains looked amazing. I rented a small wooden cabin there, hoping to enjoy some quiet time and get closer to nature. The cabin was simple and cozy, with a small fireplace, a bed, and a little kitchen. It was just me, the cabin, and the great outdoors. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time walking around, fishing in the stream, and at night, I would sit by the fire, listening to the sounds of nature. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I heard noises outside the cabin. I thought it was probably a deer or something. The next day, I found my food scattered around. I thought maybe a raccoon had gotten into it, so I made sure to put it away better. But the strange things didn't stop. I would find my stuff moved around, and sometimes, I would wake up in the middle of the night feeling scared for no reason. I couldn't shake off the feeling that someone was watching me. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I saw a person standing near my cabin. He was tall and big, and for a moment, we looked at each other. Then, he turned and disappeared into the woods. I was scared but decided to stay, thinking it was just a hiker who had lost his way. The next morning, I found a note on my door. It was a warning, telling me to leave. The handwriting was shaky, and the message was clear. I was in someone else's space. I packed up my stuff and left the cabin. As I was driving away, I saw the person again, standing at the edge of the woods, watching me. I realized then that the cabin, the campsite, was his home, his space. I was the one who didn't belong. In the end, I learned an important lesson about respecting nature and the spaces it holds. The experience was scary, but it also made me humble. It reminded me that we share this world with many creatures, seen and unseen, and we need to respect their spaces just like we want ours to be respected.
I've always liked being outside, so I thought it would be a good idea to rent a cabin for a little getaway by myself. I picked the Norris Campground in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. It's a well-liked place, famous for its pine tree setting and lots of fun stuff to do because it's in the middle of everything. The campground was really big, with over 100 basic camping spots. It was a great place for people who like to try new things, with tall mountains and thick woods all around. The air was fresh and smelled like pine trees and dirt. The sky was really blue during the day, and at night, you could see all the stars. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, hidden among the trees. It was made of logs and had a small porch at the front. Inside, there was a comfy living room, a small kitchen, and a sleeping loft. It was just the right mix of being comfortable and being out in nature. On my first night, I decided to check out the nearby Norris Geyser Basin. The path was a mile long, going through the woods and ending at the basin. As I walked, I could hear the sounds of the woods' leaves rustling, an owl hooting far away, the wind whispering. When I got to the basin, I was amazed. Geysers were shooting water high up into the air, with steam rising and then disappearing into the night sky. The ground was warm under my feet, which was a big change from the cool night air. As I started heading back to the cabin, I started to feel a bit scared. The woods seemed darker, and the sounds seemed scarier. I started walking faster, my heart beating fast. When I finally got back to the cabin, I locked the door and felt a lot better. I spent the rest of the night in the cabin, listening to the sounds of the woods outside. Even though I had been scared earlier, I felt safe inside the cabin. I fell asleep to the sound of an owl hooting and the wind blowing through the trees. The next morning, I woke up to birds singing. The sun was shining, making everything look warm. The fear from the night before felt like it was a long time ago. I spent the day looking around the park, seeing the beautiful views and different animals. That evening, as I sat on the porch and looked out at the woods, I felt peaceful. The cabin, the woods, the park it all felt like home. I realized then that being scared was just part of the adventure, a reminder of how wild nature is. In the end, my little getaway at the Norris campground was something I'll never forget. It was a chance to learn more about myself, and to see the beauty and wildness of nature. Even though there were scary moments, those moments made the whole thing even more special. I've always loved going on adventures. So, when I decided to go on a trip by myself to the Lost Dutchman State Park in Arizona, I was really excited. The park is named after a famous lost gold mine and is at the bottom of the Superstition Mountains. It's a great place for hiking and looking at the beautiful desert. The day I got there, the sun was high and made long shadows on the rough ground. I rented a small cabin in the middle of the park, surrounded by cacti and rocks. The cabin was small but comfortable, with one room and a small kitchen. It was the perfect place for some alone time. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time walking on the trails, looking at the twisted Joshua trees, and watching the stars at night. But as the days went by, I started to notice weird things. Stuff in my cabin would be moved around, and I would hear soft noises at night. I didn't think much of it, thinking it was just the desert animals. One night, a loud noise outside my cabin woke me up. I looked out the window and saw a dark shape running through the trees. My heart was beating fast as I grabbed a flashlight and went outside. The desert was really quiet and the shape was gone. I spent the rest of the night being really alert, jumping at every noise. When the sun came up, I decided to look around. I found footprints leading away from my cabin and into the wild. They were too big to be from an animal. I followed the footprints, which took me to a hidden valley in the park. There, I found an old mine shaft, almost hidden by plants. I got a cold feeling when I realized that the shape I had seen was probably a person, maybe someone still looking for the lost Dutchman's gold. I told the park rangers about what I found, and they were surprised and said they would look into it. I spent my last night in the cabin feeling a bit scared but was glad when nothing happened. When I left the Lost Dutchman State Park, I felt relieved but also interested. 
My solo trip had turned into a real-life mystery, which made it even more exciting. The experience reminded me of how wild the wilderness is, its secrets, and how real life can be like the stories we tell. So, my adventure at the Lost Dutchman State Park ended with a bang, not a whisper. It was a trip I would never forget, showing me how unpredictable nature can be and the excitement of the unknown. I've always loved exploring new places. So, I was really excited when I planned a solo trip to the Hidden Valley Campground in Joshua Tree National Park, California. This park, known for its unique Joshua trees, is located between two deserts. It's a really cool place to camp. When I got there, it was a sunny day and the shadows of the Joshua trees were long. The campground was big and surrounded by the beautiful desert. It was also near some great places for hiking and climbing. I stayed in a small, old cabin right in the middle of the park. It was basic with just a bed, a small place to cook, and a tiny bathroom. The cabin was made of old wood that made noise when the wind blew, which added to the quiet feel of the desert. When it got dark, the desert felt different. The sky was full of stars and the only sounds were from an owl or the wind moving the desert plants. I decided to go for a walk at night with just my flashlight and the moon to light the way. The desert looked really cool at night with the moon making shadows on the sand. Then I heard a noise behind me. I turned around and my heart was beating fast. My flashlight showed a coyote, its eyes shining in the light. It looked at me for a bit, and then it left. I quickly went back to my cabin, my heart still beating fast. Seeing the coyote reminded me that I was in the wild. I made sure my cabin door and windows were locked, and I felt a new respect for the desert at night. The rest of the night was quiet. When the sun came up, I went outside to see the sunrise. The sky was orange and pink. The scary thing that happened the night before didn't seem so bad in the light of the new day. My time at the Hidden Valley campground was an adventure with some scary and amazing parts. It reminded me of how beautiful and powerful nature is. When I was packing to leave, I looked at the cabin one last time and felt proud. I had faced my fears and had a great adventure. I've always lived in Texas, but I was drawn to the Hidden Valley Campground in Joshua Tree National Park, California. I decided to rent a cabin there for a week, looking forward to some alone time and the simple beauty of the desert. The campsite was amazing, located between two deserts. The cabin was right in the middle of the park, surrounded by unique Joshua trees and rough rock shapes. It was a small wooden house, old and worn, fitting perfectly into the desert surroundings. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time walking around the huge area, hiking the well-known paths during the day. The desert was full of a beauty that was simple and strong. The sunsets were incredible, filling the sky with shades of orange and pink, creating long shadows that moved between the Joshua trees. One night, I woke up to a weird sound. It was a low growl, not really like an animal, not really like a machine. I sat up in bed, my heart beating fast in the quiet of the cabin. I listened carefully, but the sound had stopped. I thought it was just the wind blowing through the narrow canyons. The next day, I found odd tracks around the cabin. They were different from any animal tracks I'd seen before. I felt a bit worried, but I brushed it off, reminding myself that the desert was home to many animals. That night, the noise came back. It was louder this time, a deep growl that seemed to bounce around the cabin. I held my flashlight tightly, my breath catching in my throat. I could hear something moving outside. I made myself look out the window, my hand shaking as I pulled back the curtain. In the light of my flashlight, I saw a figure. It was tall and bent over, with long, twisted arms and legs. It was covered in what looked like rough, tangled fur. It turned and looked straight at me, its eyes reflecting the light from my flashlight. I jumped back in fear, my blood freezing. I spent the rest of the night in the corner of the cabin, the door blocked with whatever I could find. The growling continued off and on throughout the night, a scary reminder of the creature outside. 
As the first light of morning came through the window, the growling finally stopped. I went outside, the desert strangely quiet after the scary night. The figure was gone, but the tracks were still there, a scary proof of the creature's existence. I packed up and left that day, my wish for alone time replaced with a strong need for the safety of the city. As I drove away, I looked back at the cabin one last time. It stood there, quiet and simple, a strong reminder of the unknown secrets hidden in the heart of the desert. I had always wanted to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Washington, one of the best states for hiking. It was supposed to offer stunning views of empty Rainier, the highest peak in the Cascade Range. I decided to go solo, since none of my friends were available or interested in joining me. I packed my backpack with the essentials, water, snacks, map, compass, flashlight, knife, and a tent. I planned to camp overnight at the Sunrise Campground, near the trailhead, and then start my hike early in the morning. The first part of the trail was easy and pleasant, as I followed a gentle slope through a meadow full of wildflowers. I could see the snow-capped summit of M.T. Rainier looming in the distance, and I felt a surge of excitement and awe. I reached the first of the three burrows, a rocky ridge that offered a panoramic view of the mountain and the surrounding valleys. I stopped to take some pictures and catch my breath, feeling proud of myself for making it this far. I continued to the second burrows, which was higher and steeper than the first one. The trail became more challenging, as I had to scramble over boulders and navigate narrow ledges. The wind picked up, and I felt a chill in the air. I put on my jacket and hat, and checked my watch. It was almost noon, and I estimated that I had another hour or so to reach the third and final burrows, the highest accessible point on the mountain at 7,402 feet. I decided to have a quick lunch break before tackling the last stretch. I found a flat spot to sit down and eat my sandwich, enjoying the solitude and the scenery. I didn't see any other hikers on the trail, which was fine by me. I liked the feeling of being alone in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city. I finished my meal and packed up my trash, ready to resume my hike. As I stood up, I heard a rustle in the bushes behind me. I turned around, expecting to see a squirrel or a bird but instead I saw a pair of yellow eyes staring at me from the shadows. I froze, as a wave of fear washed over me. I realized that I was face to face with a mountain lion, one of the most dangerous predators in the wilderness. I had read about them before, and knew that they were stealthy and elusive, rarely seen by humans. I also knew that they could attack without warning, and that they were capable of killing a person with one bite to the neck. I tried to remember what to do in this situation, but my mind went blank. The mountain lion growled, showing its sharp teeth and claws. It crouched low, ready to pounce. I knew I had to act fast, or I would be its next meal. I grabbed my backpack and threw it at the animal, hoping to scare it away or at least buy myself some time. The backpack hit the mountain lion in the face, but it didn't seem to phase it. It shook its head and lunged at me knocking me to the ground. I felt its weight on top of me, and its breath on my neck. I screamed, and reached for my knife, which was in my pocket. I managed to pull it out and stab the mountain lion in the side, hoping to hit a vital organ. The mountain lion yelled, and bit my arm, drawing blood. I stabbed it again, and again, until it finally let go of me and ran away, leaving a trail of blood behind. I lay there, in shock and pain, trying to process what had just happened. I looked at my arm, and saw that it was bleeding profusely. I felt dizzy and nauseous, and wondered if I had contracted rabies or an infection from the bite. I knew I had to get help, or I would die. I reached for my phone, which was in my backpack, but I couldn't find it. I realized that it must have fallen out when I threw the backpack at the mountain lion. I cursed, and felt a surge of panic. I was alone, injured, and without any means of communication. I had no idea how far I was from the nearest ranger station, or if anyone would find me in time. I gathered my strength, and got up. I wrapped my jacket around my arm, trying to stop the bleeding. I picked up my backpack, and looked for the trail. 
I couldn't see it, as I had wandered off the path during the struggle. I tried to remember which way I had come from, but I was disoriented and confused. I looked around, hoping to find a landmark or a sign, but all I saw were rocks and trees. I felt a wave of despair and wondered if I would ever make it out alive. I decided to follow the sun, hoping that it would lead me to the east, where I had started my hike. I walked as fast as I could, ignoring the pain and the cold. I prayed that someone would hear me, or see me, or find me. I prayed that I would survive this nightmare, and see my family and friends again. I prayed that I would never have to hike alone again. I don't know how long I walked, or how far I went. I lost track of time and distance. I felt like I was in a trance, or a dream, or a horror movie. I kept walking, until I saw a road, I followed the road, and after following it for about thirty minutes, I reached a town, and there I got treated into a hospital. I've always loved exploring new places. So, when I found out about the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska, a great place for camping, I decided to go. The campground was on a big highway, near a city called Lincoln. It was a huge place with games like pinball and mini golf, and even swimming pools. I was looking forward to spending a weekend there by myself in a small house, even though it was a bit scary. The day I got there, it was almost night time. The sun was going down and making long shadows over the campground. I could see small houses all around, each one hidden away in private. My house was at the very end, surrounded by big trees. It was a simple house made of logs with a small front porch. The first night was quiet. I spent the evening walking around the campground, enjoying being alone. But when it got dark, I started to feel a bit scared. The sounds of the forest seemed to get louder. I could hear leaves moving, an owl hooting far away, and sometimes a twig would snap. Back in my house, I tried to forget about feeling scared. I told myself that I was in a popular campground, not a spooky forest. But when I was in bed, I heard a soft scratching sound, like something was moving across the wooden floor. I sat up quickly, my heart beating fast. The room was very dark, the only light was from the moon outside. I grabbed my flashlight and turned it on, looking around the room. Everything was in its place. The scratching sound had stopped. I thought it must have been a small animal outside, maybe a raccoon. I turned off the flashlight and tried to go back to sleep. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of birds singing. The scary feelings from the night before seemed silly in the daylight. I spent the day walking around the campground, enjoying the outdoors. But when it got dark again, I started to feel scared again. I was sitting on the porch when I saw a shadow moving between the trees. It was too big to be a small animal. I stood up quickly, my heart beating fast. I shouted out, but no one answered. The shadow disappeared, and everything was quiet again. I didn't sleep much that night. Every little sound made me jump. But when morning came, I felt silly for letting my imagination scare me. There were no monsters here, no hidden dangers. Just me, alone in a small house, in the middle of a beautiful campground. On my last day, I packed up my stuff and left the house. As I drove away, I looked back at the campground. It was just as peaceful and beautiful as when I had arrived. The scary noises, the shadow in the woods, they were all because I was alone in a new place. In the end, my trip to the Double Nickel Campground was an adventure, a chance to see how brave I could be. It taught me that sometimes, the things we're scared of are just in our minds. And that sometimes, the real adventure is facing those fears and coming out stronger. I lived in Colorado, but I had never been to the Golden Eagle Campground before. It's right in the middle of the state, a calm place with lots of mountains, not too far from Colorado Springs. The campground is big, with more than 120 full hookups and 75 electric water hookups. If you love nature, you'd love it here, with over 12 miles of hiking trails for everyone. One day, I thought I'd rent a cabin there, just to get some alone time. The cabin was old and simple, 
made of wood that had been through many winters in Colorado. It was in a quiet part of the campground, surrounded by tall pine trees. The air was fresh and clean, and you could smell the pine and the earthy scent of the nearby trails. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time hiking, fishing in the nearby stream, and just enjoying the quiet. But after a while, I started noticing weird things. Stuff in the cabin would be moved around, food would disappear, and I would often wake up to the sound of soft scratching against the cabin walls. I thought it was just animals, but it started to make me feel uneasy. One night, the soft scratching sound was louder, like something was in a hurry. I decided to check it out. With a flashlight in hand, I went outside into the cold night. The light didn't show anything strange. But just as I was about to go back, I saw a faint trail of footprints leading into the woods. Curious, I followed the trail. It took me to a small clearing where I found my missing food items, all arranged in a circle. I got a chill down my spine. This wasn't something an animal would do. I rushed back to the cabin, my heart racing. The next morning, I told the campground management about what happened. They seemed surprised but said they would look into it. That night, I stayed up, listening for any sounds. But it was quiet, and eventually, I fell asleep. I was woken up by the sound of laughter. It was a child's laughter, clear and bright, echoing through the quiet night. I ran outside, the cold air stinging my skin. The laughter seemed to be coming from the clearing. As I got closer, I saw a small figure running between the trees, then disappearing into the darkness. The next day, the campground management told me that a family used to live in the area years ago. Their young son would often play in the woods and had a habit of taking food. Sadly, the boy had died in an accident. The family moved away, but people often reported seeing a small figure playing in the woods. I spent the rest of my stay feeling peaceful. The strange things didn't stop, but they didn't scare me anymore. Instead, they reminded me of the playful spirit who had once called these woods home. When it was time to leave, I left some food in the clearing, a small gift to the boy who had become my unexpected friend. In the end, my stay at the Golden Eagle campground was not what I had expected. It was spooky, unsettling, and oddly comforting. It reminded me that we're never truly alone, even when we're looking for solitude. I always lived in the busy city of Wyoming, but I decided to take a break and rented a small house at the Norris Campground, one of the best camping spots in the state. The camping spot was right in the middle of Yellowstone National Park, surrounded by tall pine trees. It was a great place for people who love adventures. The small house was old-fashioned, made of logs and had a small front porch. Inside, it was comfortable with a single room that was both a living area and bedroom. A small kitchen was in one corner, and there was a tiny bathroom with just the basic stuff. The house didn't have any modern things, which made it more charming. The first few days were calm. I spent my time checking out the nearby Norris Geyser Basin, one, walking through the thick forest, and enjoying the quiet. The nights were silent, except for the occasional sound of an owl or the noise of leaves. One night, as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a weird noise. It was a low growl, like that of a big animal. I sat up, my heart beating fast. I could hear it moving around outside the house. I held my breath, hoping it would go away. But the growling got louder, and I could hear heavy footsteps coming towards the house. I quickly grabbed the flashlight and shone it through the window. My heart almost stopped when I saw a big grizzly bear sniffing around the porch. I had heard of bears coming into the camping spot, but I had never thought I would see one so close. I knew I shouldn't go outside or make any quick movements that might scare it. I stayed as quiet as possible, watching as the bear sniffed around, its big body casting a scary shadow in the moonlight. After what felt like forever, the bear finally lost interest and walked off into the forest. I let out a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast from the encounter. The next morning, I told the park rangers about the incident, who promised me that they would check the camping spot more often. I spent the rest of my stay on high alert, but there were no more bear sightings. 
Despite the scare, my time at the Norris campground was an experience I'll never forget. It reminded me of the beautiful and unpredictable nature. As I packed up to leave, I looked back at the small house one last time, a small building standing strong in the huge wilderness. It was a reminder of my adventure, a story of survival I would remember forever. I've always lived in Texas, but I loved nature so much that I couldn't ignore it. I chose to rent a small house at the Hidden Valley Campground in Joshua Tree National Park, California. This park is famous for its special desert views, weird-looking Joshua trees, and night skies full of stars. The trip was long, but the view that welcomed me was worth every bit of it. The campground was right in the middle of the park, surrounded by huge desert views and near well-known walking paths. The small house I rented was simple, with a little porch that had a view of the big desert. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking the paths, amazed at the rock shapes, and watching the sunset color the sky in shades of orange and pink. The nights were even more amazing, with the clear desert sky showing a stunning view of the stars. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I woke up to a strange sound. It sounded like something heavy being pulled across the sand. I ran to the window, but all I could see was the dark desert under the moonlight. The next day, I found weird tracks around the small house. They were different from any animal tracks I had seen before. They were too big to be a coyote's and too odd to be a human's. I couldn't stop feeling uneasy. The sounds kept happening for the next few nights. Each night, they seemed to get louder and closer. I barely slept, and when I did, I had bad dreams of unseen creatures hiding in the desert. On the fifth night, the sound was so loud that it seemed to be right outside my small house. I gathered the courage to step outside, armed with only a flashlight. The desert was strangely quiet. As I moved the light around, it landed on a big, shadowy figure a few feet away from the small house. My heart was beating fast as I slowly recognized the figure. It was a huge desert tortoise. The dragging sound was the sound of its big, round shell scraping against the sand. I felt relieved as I realized that the source of my fear was just a harmless creature, doing its nightly routine. The rest of my stay was normal. I even found myself looking forward to the tortoise's nightly visits. On my last night, I sat on the porch, watching the tortoise slowly disappear into the desert under the starry sky. I realized then that the desert, with all its mystery and greatness, had taught me a valuable lesson about fear and the unknown. As I packed my bags the next day, I took one last look at the small house and the big desert beyond. I knew I would remember this experience forever. The Hidden Valley Campground, with its beautiful views and its nighttime visitor, had given me a story to tell, a story of fear, discovery, and ultimately, understanding. I'd always wanted to see Alaska so I decided to go there myself. I rented a small house at the Taklanica River campground in the middle of Denali National Park. The campground is pretty big, with 53 spots for RVs and tents. The trip to the campground was amazing. I could see miles and miles of trees and mountains. The campground was in a small clearing in the forest. The house was old and simple, but it was comfortable. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time walking in the forest and fishing in the river. It was nice to be away from the city. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I heard a strange noise outside the house. It sounded like a big animal moving around. I thought it might be a bear or a moose, but the noise was different. It was a low growl, and then I heard heavy footsteps. I stayed awake all night, listening to the noise. In the morning, I went outside to see what it was. I found big footprints in the mud around the house. They didn't look like any animal tracks I'd seen before. The next few nights, I heard more strange noises. I heard something scratching the walls of the house, and heavy breathing outside the window. I was scared, but I couldn't leave. The nearest town was too far away, and I couldn't call anyone. On the last night, the noises got louder. I could hear the creature walking around the house. 
I blocked the door with furniture and waited for morning. When morning came, the noises stopped. I went outside, but I didn't see anything. The footprints were gone, washed away by the rain. I packed up my stuff and left the campground as fast as I could. As I was driving away, I felt like I was being watched. I'll never forget my strange experience in Alaska. Even now, when I'm safe at home, I still dream about the strange noises. I'll always remember those scary nights in the house. But despite the fear, I still love Alaska. It's a beautiful and mysterious place. And maybe, just maybe, I'll go back one day. I lived in Ohio, but I wanted to try something new. So, I decided to rent a small house at the Hidden Valley Campground in Joshua Tree National Park, California. A really nice camping spot in America. The trip was long, but the view was worth it. The park was a rough but beautiful place, named after the slow-growing Joshua trees. The campground was in the middle of the park, surrounded by pretty desert views and near some popular walking and climbing paths. The house was simple and small, with big rocks and Joshua trees around it. Inside, there was a wooden bed, a small table, and a fireplace. It was just me, the house, and the big desert. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time walking around, looking at the cacti, and watching the sunsets. But as the days went by, I started to feel alone. The desert was very quiet, and the nights were really dark, with only the stars for light. One night, I woke up to a weird noise. It sounded like something scratching the house. I was scared and listened carefully in the dark. The noise stopped, and it was very quiet. I tried to tell myself it was just a desert animal, but I was still scared. The next morning, I found weird marks on the outside of the house. They looked like scratches, but they were too high for an animal to reach. I felt like someone was watching me. Every sound of the wind, every shadow seemed scary. Even though I was scared, I decided to stay. I wasn't going to let my fear control me. But weird things kept happening. Things inside the house moved by themselves, and I would often find my stuff outside the house. On my last night, something really scary happened. I woke up and saw the house door wide open. A cold wind came in, and I could hear a whispering sound. I jumped out of bed and quickly shut the door, my heart beating fast. When morning came, I packed my stuff and left the house. I felt so relieved to leave that place. As I drove away, I looked back at the house one last time. It was quiet and scary, very different from the beautiful desert around it. In the end, my trip to the Hidden Valley campground was not the peaceful vacation I had hoped for. It was a scary reminder that nature, while beautiful, can also be mysterious and scary. But despite the fear and the weird things that happened, I wouldn't change this experience for anything. It was a journey of learning about myself a test of my bravery, and a story I would tell for years to come. I had always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail, ever since I read about it in a magazine. It was supposed to be one of the best states for hiking in America, with stunning scenery, diverse wildlife, and rich history. I decided to take a month off from work and do a solo hike starting from Georgia and ending in Maine. I thought it would be a great way to challenge myself, reconnect with nature, and have some adventure. The first few days were amazing. I met some friendly fellow hikers, saw some beautiful waterfalls and mountains, and enjoyed the fresh air and sunshine. I felt free and happy, like I was living my dream. I followed the white blazes that marked the trail, and camped at designated shelters or campsites along the way. I had a map, a compass, a phone, and a GPS device, but I rarely needed them. The trail was well maintained and easy to follow. But things changed when I reached Virginia. The weather turned colder and wetter, and the trail became more rugged and isolated. I started to see fewer and fewer hikers, and sometimes I would go a whole day without seeing anyone. The forest seemed darker and quieter, and I felt a growing sense of unease. I tried to shake it off telling myself that I was just being paranoid. 
I was an experienced hiker, and I had all the gear and skills I needed to survive. Nothing could harm me, right? Wrong. One night, I made a terrible mistake. I was looking for a place to camp, and I saw a sign that said Pine Ridge Trail. It looked like a short detour from the main trail, and I thought it might lead to a nice spot. I decided to check it out, and followed the sign. I soon realized that it was a mistake. The trail was narrow, overgrown, and steep. It seemed to go on forever, and I couldn't see any sign of a campsite. I checked my GPS, and it showed that I was off the main trail by several miles. I cursed myself for being so stupid, and decided to turn back. But as I did, I heard a loud roar from behind me. It sounded like a bear, and a very angry one. I panicked, and ran as fast as I could. I knew that running from a bear was a bad idea, but I couldn't think of anything else. I hoped that it would lose interest, or that I would find the main trail again. But neither happened. The bear was faster than me, and it was gaining on me. I could hear its heavy breathing, its growling, and its claws scraping the ground. I knew it was only a matter of time before it caught me. I reached a clearing, and saw a small cabin in the distance. It looked old and abandoned, but it was my only chance. I sprinted towards it, hoping that the door was unlocked. I reached it, and tried the handle. It was open. I slammed the door behind me, and locked it. I looked around, and saw that the cabin was empty and dusty. There was a fireplace, a table, a chair, and a bed. There was also a window, and I saw the bear outside. It was huge, black, and furious. It roared, and charged at the door. It hit it with its full force, and the door shook. I backed away, and looked for something to defend myself. There was nothing. No gun, no knife, no axe. Nothing. I was trapped and doomed. The bear hit the door again and again, but thankfully it couldn't break it. After a few minutes, I heard it going away. I still wonder what would have happened if it had managed to break the door. I've always loved exploring new places, so when I had the opportunity to stay in a cabin at the Thousand Trails Yosemite Lakes in California. I jumped at the chance. The campsite was huge, covering over 400 acres of untouched nature. The tall trees, the sparkling river, and the peaceful surroundings were amazing to see. The cabin I stayed in was tucked away in a quiet part of the campsite, surrounded by tall pine trees and with a view of the south fork of the Tuolumne River. It was a basic wooden house, simple but cozy, with a small front porch. The first few days were calm. I spent my time getting to know the campsite, walking along the river, and enjoying the quiet. But as the days went on, I started to notice weird things happening. Stuff in my cabin would be moved around, and I would hear strange sounds at night. I thought it was just the wind or maybe an animal, but it started to make me nervous. One night, I was woken up by a loud noise. I got out of bed and turned on the light, only to find the cabin a mess. My stuff was thrown all over the floor, and the window was wide open. I felt a shiver down my spine. I looked around the cabin, but didn't find any signs of someone breaking in. The next day, I decided to end my trip early. I packed up my stuff and left the cabin, feeling relieved as I drove away. As I looked in the rearview mirror, I saw the cabin getting smaller in the distance, its windows dark and empty. In the end, I realized that sometimes, the scariest things are not the ones that make noise in the night, but the things we don't know. The cabin at Thousand Trails Yosemite Lakes will always remind me of that spooky adventure, a symbol of the secrets that nature holds. I always dreamt of seeing the wild side of Alaska, so I rented a cabin at the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins. This camping spot, right in the middle of Alaska, was famous for its untouched beauty and calmness. The park was welcoming to large vehicles with over 100 drive through spots, tent sites, cabins, and brand new luxury camping tents. Each spot was surrounded by well-cut trees and plants, giving you a full Alaskan experience. The day I got there, the sun was shining brightly, 
making long shadows of the tall pine trees. The air was cool and fresh, filled with the smell of the nearby woods. My cabin was a small, old-fashioned building made of logs, with a single window that gave a view of the wide open wilderness. It was simple but comfortable, with a small kitchen, a bed, and a fireplace. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around the nearby woods, fishing in the close-by stream, and enjoying the quiet. But as the days went by, I started to notice weird things. Food was missing from my cabin, even though I was sure I had locked the door. I would wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of something scratching at the door. I thought it was just animals, but I started to feel more and more uneasy each day. One night, the scratching sound was louder than before. I gathered the courage to look out the window, half expecting to see a bear. But there was nothing. Just the dark, quiet forest. I decided to check it out in the morning. As the sun rose, I stepped outside and saw something strange. There were footprints around my cabin. They were too big to be from any animal, and they led straight into the woods. I decided to follow them, my heart beating fast in my chest. The footprints led me to a clearing in the woods. In the middle of it was a pile of stuffed clothes, camping gear, and a wallet. I opened the wallet and found an ID. It belonged to a man who had gone missing in the area a year ago. The realization hit me hard. I was not alone. I rushed back to my cabin, packed my things, and left. As I drove away, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. I reported my findings to the local authorities, who started a search operation. They found the remains of the missing man not far from the clearing. I returned home, shaken but safe. The experience was scary, but it taught me an important lesson. The wilderness is beautiful, but it is also unpredictable and full of mysteries. I still love Alaska, but I've learned to respect its wild nature and the secrets it holds. And that's my story. It was a scary experience, but it ended well. I'm safe, and because of my discovery, a missing person's case was finally closed. The wilderness of Alaska is beautiful, but it's also a place where you need to be aware and respectful of your surroundings. I'd always heard good things about the Norris Campground in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. People said it was one of the best places to camp in the state. So, I decided to rent a cabin there for a weekend trip. The campground was right in the middle of Yellowstone and was surrounded by pine trees. It was a big place, with a hundred simple camping spots. The campground was close to many of Yellowstone's main sites, including the lower, upper, and Midway Geyser Basins and the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The cabin I rented was snug and comfortable, tucked away among the tall pine trees. It was a basic wooden building with one room, a tiny kitchen, and a bathroom. The front porch looked out over a small stream that flowed nearby, and the air was filled with the smell of pine and the sound of running water. On the first night, I decided to check out the area around me. As I walked through the thick woods, the setting sun cast long shadows between the trees, and the woods seemed to come alive with the sounds of nature. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, but there was nothing there. I brushed it off as just the wind and kept walking. As the days went by, I started noticing weird things. Food I had left in the cabin would go missing. I would find my stuff moved from where I had left them. One night, I woke up to the sound of something scratching at the door. I looked out the window but saw nothing. Despite these strange events, I decided to stay. I wasn't going to let some weird happenings ruin my trip. On my last night, I decided to take a late night walk. As I was walking, I suddenly felt a shiver down my spine. I turned around and saw a big bear standing on its back legs, looking straight at me. I was scared stiff. Remembering the advice I had read about what to do if you come across a bear. I slowly started to back away, never taking my eyes off the bear. After what felt like forever, I made it back to my cabin and quickly locked the door. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and left the cabin. As I drove away, I couldn't help but feel relieved. My weekend trip had turned into a scary adventure. But despite the fear, 
I had made it through. I had faced the wild and come out okay. That trip to Norris Campground was one I would never forget. It taught me what adventure and survival really mean. And it reminded me of the raw, wild beauty of nature beautiful, yet scary in its own way. I've always enjoyed being outside. So, when I got the chance to rent a small cabin in the 11 Mile State Park in Colorado, I was thrilled. This park is a favorite spot for camping, famous for its peaceful lake and stunning views. The cabin was tucked away in a quiet part of the park, surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear view of the night sky filled with stars. The cabin was simple, with a small front porch and one room inside. It had a comfy bed, a tiny kitchen, and a stove for heating. The windows were small, letting in just enough daylight to light up the cabin. On the first night, I made a small fire outside and cooked dinner. The smell of the wood burning and the sound of the fire crackling were soothing. I spent the evening reading a book by the light of the fire, the quietness of the wild around me only interrupted by the occasional sound of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. The next day, I decided to explore the park. I followed a path that took me through thick forests and open fields, past the shiny lake, and up a small hill that offered a wide view of the park. The beauty of the place was amazing, and I felt a sense of peace and calm that I hadn't felt in a long time. But as the sun started to set, I began to feel a bit uneasy. The sounds of the forest that were once familiar now seemed strange and scary in the dimming light. I walked faster, eager to get back to the safety of my cabin. When I finally reached the cabin, I felt relieved. I quickly locked the door behind me and lit the stove, the warm light of the fire calming my nerves. But as I settled down for the night, I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. That night, I was woken up by a strange noise outside. It sounded like something heavy being dragged across the ground. I sat up in bed, my heart racing. I listened carefully, trying to figure out where the noise was coming from, but it was gone. In the morning, I went outside and found a set of large, strange tracks leading away from my cabin into the forest. The sight of the tracks filled me with fear, but I was determined not to let fear ruin my trip. For the rest of my stay, I stayed close to my cabin, always watching for whatever had left those tracks. But nothing else happened, and I started to relax again. On my last day, as I was packing up to leave, I found a small, carved wooden figure on the doorstep of my cabin. It was roughly made, but there was something creepy about it. I left it there, a scary reminder of the unknown dangers that hid in the wild. As I drove away from the park, I couldn't help but feel relieved. My trip had been an adventure, but it was also a stark reminder of how unpredictable and harsh nature could be. But despite the fear and uncertainty, I knew I would be back. The allure of the wild was too strong to resist. I've always lived in Ohio, but I decided to go on a vacation to California, a place known for its great camping spots. I booked a cabin at Heritage Farms, a family-owned farm that's been around for five generations. This 115-acre farm is right in the middle of the beautiful Cuyahoga Valley National Park and is close to many hiking trails. The camping area was huge, with a combination of open spaces and thick forests. There were 15 camping spots available, including 9 spots for tents, 3 A-frame spots, 2 standard shelter spots, and 1 luxury camping spot. Each spot had a fire pit, a grill, a picnic table, and a rack for storing firewood. The cabin I booked was tucked away in a quiet part of the camping area. It was a simple wooden cabin with a small porch at the front. Inside, it was comfortable and warm, with a single room that served as both a living room and a bedroom. There was a small kitchen area in one corner, and a wood-burning stove for heat. One night, as I was getting ready for bed, I heard a noise outside. I thought it was just the wind or maybe a small animal. But then, the noise got louder, and it sounded like it was getting closer. I felt a shiver down my spine. I picked up my flashlight and carefully went outside. The light from the flashlight cut through the darkness, but I didn't see anything unusual. 
Just as I was about to go back inside, I saw it a big bear going through my food. I was frozen in fear. I knew I had to scare it away, but I didn't know how. Then I remembered reading that making loud noises could scare off bears. So, gathering all my courage, I started shouting and banging on the side of the cabin. Luckily, the bear seemed surprised and quickly ran off into the forest. I breathed a sigh of relief and quickly went back inside, making sure to lock the door. The rest of the night was quiet, but I was still feeling the rush of adrenaline. The next morning, I cleaned up the mess the bear had made and made sure to store my food in a safer place. Even though I had a bit of a scare, the rest of my stay at the campsite was peaceful. I spent my days exploring the trails and my nights listening to the sounds of the forest. The encounter with the bear was a reminder of how unpredictable nature can be, but it didn't make me love camping any less. In the end, my solo trip to the cabin in the woods was an adventure I'll never forget. It was a journey of self-discovery, a test of bravery, and a chance to connect with nature in its purest form. And despite the scare, I knew I would be back again, ready for whatever new adventures were waiting for me. I'd always heard about how beautiful Alaska was, and I finally decided to see it for myself. I booked a cabin at the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins, a family-run place known for being clean and having friendly staff. The park was big enough for large vehicles with over 100 drive through spots, tent areas, cabins, and new fancy camping tents. Each spot was surrounded by well-cut trees and plants, making me feel like I was really in Alaska. The day I got there, the sun was out, making the well-cut trees and plants around the cabin look warm and inviting. The cabin itself was cute, made of logs and tucked away among the trees. It was small but comfortable, with one room that was both a living room and a bedroom. There was a small kitchen area in one corner, and a wood-burning stove in another. The first few days were calm. I spent my time exploring the nearby wilderness, taking in the amazing views of the Alaskan scenery. The nights were quiet, except for the occasional sound of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I was woken up by a strange noise outside my cabin. It sounded like something heavy being pulled across the ground. I looked out the window but didn't see anything. The next day, I found a path of turned up dirt leading away from my cabin into the woods. I followed it for a bit but didn't find anything at the end. The next few nights were filled with more strange noises thumps, scratching sounds, and once, a low growl. Each morning, I would find more signs of something hanging around my cabin broken branches, more paths of turned up dirt, and once, a big, muddy paw print. I was scared, but I was also determined not to let whatever was out there ruin my trip. I kept telling myself it was probably just a bear or some other animal. But the fear was always there, in the back of my mind. On my last night, the noises were louder and happened more often. I could hear something moving around outside, going around the cabin. I didn't sleep at all that night, keeping my eyes on the window, trying to see what was out there. When morning came, the noises stopped. I packed up my stuff and left the cabin, promising myself I would never come back. As I drove away, I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the cabin, quiet and peaceful in the morning light. But the memory of those scary nights will stay with me forever. Despite the fear and the sleepless nights, I don't regret my trip to Alaska. It's a beautiful place, full of mystery and wonder. But it's also wild and unpredictable, and sometimes, a bit scary. But isn't that what makes it so thrilling? I always loved hiking alone. It gave me a sense of freedom and adventure that I couldn't find anywhere else. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to the Appalachian Trail, one of the most famous and longest hiking trails in America. I had heard that it was a beautiful and challenging route, with diverse landscapes and wildlife. I was eager to explore it for myself. I packed my backpack with the essentials, a tent, a sleeping bag, a flashlight, a knife, a map, a compass, some food and water, and a first aid kit. I also brought my phone, 
but I knew that the signal would be weak or non-existent in some areas. I didn't mind. I wanted to disconnect from the world and enjoy nature. I started my hike from the southern end of the trail, in Georgia. I planned to hike for about a week, covering about 100 miles. I didn't have a fixed itinerary, I just wanted to go with the flow and see where the trail would take me. The first few days were amazing. I saw breathtaking views of mountains, forests, rivers, and lakes. I met some friendly fellow hikers along the way, who shared their stories and tips with me. I felt alive and happy. But things changed on the fourth day. I woke up to a cloudy and windy morning. I checked the weather forecast on my phone, and it said that there was a storm coming. I decided to pack up quickly and tried to find a shelter before it got worse. I followed the trail markers, hoping to reach a nearby campsite or a cabin. But as I walked, the weather got worse. The wind howled, the rain poured, and the thunder roared. I could barely see where I was going. I started to panic. I felt like I was lost. I checked my phone, but it had no signal. I checked my map, but it was soaked and torn. I checked my compass, but it was broken. I had no idea where I was or where to go. I stumbled upon a fork in the trail. There were two paths, one going left and one going right. There was no sign or marker to indicate which one was the right one. I had to make a choice. I decided to go left, hoping that it would lead me to safety. I regretted that decision as soon as I made it. The left path was narrow and steep, with rocks and roots everywhere. It was hard to walk on, especially with the slippery mud and the heavy backpack. I tripped and fell several times, bruising and cutting myself. I cursed and cried, but I kept going. I hoped that the path would end soon, but it didn't. It just kept going deeper and deeper into the woods. The trees were thick and dark, blocking any light or view. I felt like I was in a maze, with no way out. I started to hear noises. Strange noises. Noises that didn't belong in the woods. Noises that made my blood run cold. I heard growls and snarls, like those of a wild animal. I heard footsteps and rustles, like those of someone or something following me. I heard whispers and giggles, like those of a child or a lunatic. I turned around, but I saw nothing. I ran, but I couldn't escape. I screamed, but no one heard me. I don't know how long I ran, but I finally found a road, followed it for a while, and reached a town. But I still wonder what would have happened if I hadn't found the road.